Okay. Please turn off your mobile phones, it says on here. And it doesn't say whether I'm live or not yet. Am I? Am I live? <laughs> I doubt it at times. <laughs> It's lovely to see you this morning. We give a special welcome to the friends and family of Lydia here on the front row, looking at me a little bit daunted. But uh, lovely to see you all, mate. We hope that you feel at home. Uh, this is a, a very friendly church with a, a pretty friendly vicar. Uh, uh, and uh, we, we trust that this, uh, this morning's service will just be a blessing to you. And you'll enjoy the, the singing and the company and the word and, of course, the baptism. Uh, so, first of all, let's just have a little word of prayer right at the beginning. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this privilege of coming to worship you. We thank you for the opportunity of, uh, of witnessing this baptism of Lydia this morning. And we pray that this hour that we spend together might be an hour of blessing for each and every one of us, because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to sing our first song. So I'd ask you to stand and sing, Mighty, Mighty Savior. Come to the time in our service where we say sorry to God, we call it confession, and we look at our own lives. We don't we don't look at our neighbors or how we've come with, we look at inside ourselves and we we realize that we've fallen short. So I'm going to say the words in white, and I'm going to join you, hopefully, uh, with the words in yellow. Uh, please forgive me, because we're not always gentle, kind, humble, meek, and patient as you want us to be. Father, in your mercy, we say, think, and do things which hurt others and hurt you. Father, in your mercy, we find it difficult to put up with and forgive others. Father, in your mercy, please forgive us. And we don't include you in all that we do. 
Father, in your mercy, please forgive us. So may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Okay, we'll say amen to that. Now let's stand and declare our faith. If you're not used to this part of the service, uh, we're a Christian church here, and these are the fundamentals that we believe. So uh, if you can't join with us, you just stand and just read the words. I'll ask the questions and uh, respond. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, Jesus Christ, who took human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit down. Our vicar is going to come to the front and take over. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. I'll try and be friendly like you said I would be. <laughs> Fantastic to see you uh, all here uh, this morning. It's an enjoy to celebrate uh, Lydia's baptism uh, together. Just a couple of, of uh, news items uh, about the church and what we've been doing. Uh, our toddler group has started its Church of the Saviour, nice big hall, uh, Thursday mornings during term time. Uh, if you uh, would like to come along to that. Uh, do you just come at 9.30 or 10 on a Thursday morning? We've done that. Lisa, would you like to come up and tell us about the next ladies' event? What a, a heavy Saturday, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> right, well... No. Uh, on Wednesday the 1st of December, and you'll find this information on all the flyers that are out in the reception area, there's a uh, ladies' craft evening. We do these several times a year. This year, uh, for Christmas, uh, starting at 7.15 on that evening, we're going to make these illuminated bottles. I'll try and hold one up on screen as well. Let's just turn them off. Okay, I'm sure you've seen this sort of thing in the shops. So I'm going to get the opportunity to make them. So, on screen, some bottles, okay. The tickets are £10 each, and that includes all your crafting items except the bottle, because I am not drinking 60 bottles of wine <laughs> before the 1st of December. So, you need to bring an empty bottle, and you can see the sort of thing I've got here. This wasn't a wine bottle, actually, I'll have you know, but uh, it was cordial. But this is uh, obviously just an ordinary wine bottle. And all the, all the ingredients, all the materials will be provided. Um, and there will be refreshments and there will be a speaker and we'll get time as women to spend time in fellowship together. If you're interested and you'd like a ticket, please come see me after the uh, service. Um, alternatively, see Sheila, but I'm not sure she will be giving you right at the end, will you? So I'm going to take my bottles and uh, I think that's it. Fantastic, thank you. Let's fill up with that. Um, you don't have to be a Christian to come to these things. You don't have to be a member of our chest for all women everywhere so they can get there. So uh, do uh, come along to that if you'd like. And we uh, have our evening service this evening uh, at seven o'clock if you'd like to come back. Um, if you'd like to give towards the work of the church, uh, we're in the 21st century now. We've got contactless giving in the foyer. You can stick stuff in a in a box, we don't do the um, we don't do the plate going around anymore because of COVID, uh, so we won't be doing that. And if you'd like your attendance registered for school entry, you can write that in the foyer as well. Right, are we ready? Excellent. I am going to. I've been told to turn this camera around. There we go. And uh, is that all right? I'll stand here, can I have the uh, parents and godparents of Lydia and see what you can stand over here, please? Hello. 
practiced it anyway, like last week. She, she seems to be all right. <laughs> we'll just uh, say these promises first. Um, you guys, have you got, we've got our cheat screen there. Um, this first uh, question is for you. It's for us as a congregation, as, as family and friends. Uh, and I'm going to ask us, are we willing to pray for and support Lydia? in her Christian journey because it takes a church to uh, raise a Christian. We're in it together. So faith is the gift of God to his people. In baptism, the Lord is adding to our number those whom he is calling. People of God, will you welcome Lydia and uphold her in her new life in Christ? With the help of our Brilliant. And I'm going to turn to you guys and ask you these questions. Parents and godparents, the church receives the Lord of joy. Today we're trusting God for her growth in faith. Will you pray for her? Draw her by your example into the community of faith and walk with her in the way of Christ. Baptism when she begins her journey in faith. You speak to her today. You might get her speaking at some point, we don't know. Will you care for her and help her to take her place within the life and worship of Christ? In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life in him. Therefore, parents and God parents, I ask you, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbor? Do you turn to Christ as Savior? Do you submit to Christ as Lord? And do you come to Christ the way of Praise God who made heaven and earth. He is his promise forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Right. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ was baptized in the river Jordan, we thank you for the gift of water to cleanse us and revive us, saving God. We thank you that through the waters of the Red Sea you led your people out of slavery to freedom in the promised land, saving God. And we thank you that through the deep waters of death, you brought your son and raised him to life and triumph, saving God. Just Sanctify this water that your servant, who is washed in it, may be made one in Christ in her death and resurrection, to be cleansed and delivered from all sin, saving God. Just there you go. Lydia has I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. May God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the mercies of his grace. I live in the company of Christ's covenant people who may daily be believed by his anointed spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints of God. Amen. <laughs> Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith that Christ crucified. I now believe that the disciple of Christ again saved the world from the death and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. So the Almighty God delivering you from the powers of darkness, restoring you the image of his glory. 
Amazing the light and the breathing. So we have uh, a big round of applause. Again, as if you had to stand, let's sing. All together, Psalm 9. Smack in the middle of your Bible somewhere. <coughs> On page 900 and... Nine somewhere. It's better than now. Why am I? <laughs> That's a curved ball you've just thrown. In there. Okay. Well, is it going to come on the screen, John? Okay. Now we're in trouble. <laughs> okay. Psalm nine, page five hundred and forty-six. Uh, we'll read it all together. As has already been announced, all right? Are we ready then? I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you. For you have held my right and my cause. You have sat on your throne judging righteously. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out your name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken the enemy. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. For the Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne of judgment. He will judge the world in righteousness. He will govern the peoples with justice. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name will trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, have forsaken them who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord, enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what the Lord has done. For he who avenges blood remembers. He who does not ignore the cry of the afflicted. O Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. 
Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death, that I may declare your praises in the gates of the daughter of Zion, and there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into a pit and have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by his justice. The wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. The wicked return to the grave. All the nations that forget God. But the needy will not always be forgotten. Nor the hope of the enemy ever perish. Arise, O Lord. Let no man triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are but men. Isn't that a lovely sound, eh? Time of encouragement. Okay. Reading from Matthew. All yours. The next reading is taken from Matthew chapter 6, beginning to read at verse 5. It can be found on page 970. <laughs> it would be as silly as to do that. <laughs> And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to, to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what, he, what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Um, just so you're aware, my, my child has just made this point perfectly. We love having kids here, and uh, and um, we don't care about noise that much. You know, don't worry about a bit of noise. But if they're really kicking off, like my son just was, because his sister hit him on the head with a hard dolly. <laughs> Whoever says that children are innocent? <laughs> uh, there's a room just out in the foyer with some toys if, if, if they need to uh, calm down or go in there, or if you need to feed a child and would like to use that room as well. So there you go. Uh, we're in a, a We've got lots of guests, so it's great to have you with us uh, this morning. We're in a series at the moment, uh, looking at what makes a healthy Christian and what makes a healthy church. Um, just like we might look after ourselves physically, um, we need to look after ourselves spiritually. And actually, uh, we see in the Bible uh, how we can be healthy, spiritually healthy Christians. And over the last few weeks, we've been looking at the early church and what made them a healthy church. And um, I'm not working, John. Um, there you go. And we saw the first thing was fellowship. Fellowship is when Christians get together uh, to encourage each other, basically. Um, so I wrote we have things like the ladies group. We saw that really helps us be healthy spiritually. And then we saw the Bible. God has given us the Bible. It's like a meal we need every day to help us keep going as Christians. And then we saw the Lord's Supper last week as we uh, enjoy the bread and the wine as God strengthens us through the communion. And then today, we're looking at prayer, uh, how, God, how we can pray to God. Now, how do you speak to someone 
shows the type of relationship you have with them, doesn't it? So children, how might you speak to your mates? What kind of things might you say to your mates? What might you say? How might you speak to them? Adults, you can help as well. Yeah, go on, Isaac. Hi. <laughs> what else might you do with your mates when you speak to them? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you might use slang that told people that understand. Yeah? You might say, what are you doing? Yeah, you speak to them in a certain way, don't you? What are you teaching? Do you speak to your teachers in the same way you speak to your mates? Don't say yes, Isaac. <laughs> what are you going to say? You don't say anything. <laughs> so we've got teachers back there, Lisa. Yes, miss. Okay. Uh, I might speak to talk to the police. So, sorry. <laughs> I mean, you might speak different to your family as well, aren't you? Yeah, you speak to your family in a very different way. <laughs> God affects how we speak to him. If we've got a wrong understanding of God, we won't speak to him in the right way. So how do we speak to God? Well, in that Bible passage we just had read, there were two groups of people who didn't really understand who God was. And so they didn't speak to him in the right way. And we're going to see the first type of person now. <clears throat> <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Most important. Can you see me? Yes. That's real good. You look at me, not him, Billy. As I'm more important than him. Oh, God. Omnipotent, omniscient Lord, thank you that I am so important. The most important person I know and can pray to you so well. Oh, yes. Thank you that I am so blessed and so good, real good, the most good person I know and I respect. I am so blessed and good. Please help these people here be just as good as me, even better than me. I doubt it very much. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Do you want me to be personal to you as well? Because I don't mind because you're not as good as me. Okay. Thank you so much. Do you want me to stand up a bit? I know what's going to happen there. <laughs> Now, person one, he was pretending to pray to God, but really, he just wanted to be seen, didn't he? He was all about himself. And Jesus says, oh, they love to pray standing on the street corners to be seen by men. Well, they've, they've received their reward in full. They've got the praise of men or the laughter of men. But that's all. Don't pray like that. God won't answer. And then he talks about another type of person who prays, he says, those who pray like the pagans, and let's see what happens now. <laughs> All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, God, oh God, hear my prayer. Hear me pray. Answer me, God. 
I call upon your name because I invoke your presence. God, oh God, God, oh God, hear my prayer. Hear my prayer, answer me, God. I call upon your name, I invoke your presence. Oh God, answer my requests. Bless my family, all my family. The whole world is my family. God, oh God, God, oh God, hear my prayer. Hear my prayer, answer me, God. I call upon your name, I invoke your presence. God, oh God, please hear my prayer. Hear my prayer and answer me, God, please. I call upon your name, I invoke your presence. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll be thinking what was wrong with that like, what's wrong with that but that is the prayer of someone who thinks they have to twist God's arm that's the prayer of someone who thinks I see God doesn't really want to hear me so I have to keep crying out again and again the same thing and there was an idea of the, the pagans at the time that if you said just the right prayer in just the right way enough times that, that God would listen to you if you got it just right, if you did it just the right way, you had to force him to listen to you. Jesus, Jesus says, don't pray like that. You don't need to pray like that. And here's why, here's what's so important. Here's what's key about Christian prayer. Jesus says, don't pray like that. For your father knows what you need before you ask him. Prayer for the Christian is not trying to look good. It's not trying to twist God's arm to get what you want. It is talking to your Father in heaven. Your Father who knows what you want and wants to listen to you. Prayer is speaking to God. Our Father, you don't need to say magic words. <laughs> he wants to listen. One uh, thing was like, prayer is not an attempt to force God's hand. It's a humble acknowledgement of helplessness and dependence on him. You see, if you put your trust in Jesus, it means you've been adopted into God's family. The Bible says because of our sin, we're not part of God's family. But when we trust Jesus and his work on the cross to forgive us, we're brought in to a new family. Baptism is a sign of that. Right, it's great to welcome Lydia into God's family today. And you know the creator of the universe as your dad. Now, parents, I want you to have a think. What was your child's first word? What was Maddie's first word? Mama. Mama wins. Anyone any others? What was ours, Rach? <coughs> I think it was Dada. <laughs> yeah, God, I said, no, no. Oh my goodness, that's a good start, isn't it? So, what was Zanthi's first word? Ma, 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 ma. All right, one to win in. Any of this? Yeah. Cake! <laughs> there we go. We know he's going to be asking questions quickly afterwards. There we cake. Now, parents, when our kids start speaking, we don't really care what they say that much. We don't care about their sentence structure and their grammar, do we? We're not correcting their first words, saying mummy, not mama. We just want to hear them speak, don't we? Because we love them. And we're not going to communicate with us. The same is true with God. Maybe you don't know quite, oh, how, how exactly do I pray when you start? So we trust in Jesus as your father. And I just want you to try to speak to him. Maybe just for the first time. 
So prayer is speaking to God our Father. But then just as a child develops in their speech as they get older, so as Christians, we develop in how we pray as we go on as Christians. And Jesus actually teaches us how to pray in a model prayer, the Lord's Prayer that we saw there. He says, God wants to hear you. Go into your room, close the door, pray to your Father unseen. And then he gives us the Lord's Prayer in verse 9 to 13. And we'll be praying a bit later in the service. But what do we learn from the Lord's Prayer? Well, just, just a couple of things. The first is this. It starts with God's will, doesn't it? How does the Lord's Prayer start? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want his will to be done. Now, children, if you went up to your parents and said, I want 10 Kit Kats for lunch, what would they say? Oh. Are they me? <laughs> they know that if you have 10 Kit Kats for lunch, you're going to have a sugar high and go hyper, and you're going to have a sugar low and go grumpy, and then you're going to be really hungry. And it's not good for you. And sometimes we pray prayers that are always good for us. And that's okay. God still hears, still cares about us. But he wants us to pray prayers that are good for us and good for him, good for his kingdom. And so when we come to pray to God, we want to pray with his will, with his intentions in mind. And the longer you're a Christian, the more you get used to what he wants and what is good, because he wants what is best for you. So that's the first thing, God's will. And the second thing is our needs. Not just our physical needs, but also our spiritual needs. So have a look at verse 11. Give us today a lottery win. Has anyone ever prayed that? Give us today a lottery win. Yeah? Give us today a nice big house. Give us today a sports car. No, it says give us today our daily breads. So that day by day we depend on God and he gives us what we need. And then we see our spiritual needs. Forgive us our debts or our sins. We ask for forgiveness. And Christians are people who again and again come to God for forgiveness and help to live. And then there's a real challenge at the end of this passage. I wonder if you saw it. In verse 14, if you forgive men when they are against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. That's a challenge, isn't it? Because it's really hard to forgive people sometimes. And what Jesus is saying there is, if you know how much God has forgiven you, it will help you forgive others. C.S. Lewis, who wrote The Lion, The Witch and the Wardrobe and all that other, all the Narnia books, he says, to be a Christian, means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. He's forgiven your sin, which is so great because they're against a God who is eternal. He says, if you're trusting God for forgiveness, you should be the kind of person who forgives others. So there you go, that's just a brief Explanation, thinking about prayer, the way we can be healthy Christians. God's will first, our needs second. We speak to God as our Father. So, um, oh, Lydia's gone, but Lydia's parents are godparents. Uh, you've promised to pray for Lydia today, haven't you? Uh, and you can go a lot worse than praying with Lydia the Lord's Prayer in every language. Teach her it. Help understand what it means to talk to God as Father. And I guess all of us, uh, hopefully we've seen that it is an amazing privilege to talk to the creator of the universe, the perfect God, as our Father. We can do that if we're trusting Jesus. Let's make the most of it. 
Let's get into a habit of talking to him as we talk to someone we love and know and trust. And if you don't yet know God is your father, if you've not put your trust in Jesus, then maybe today is a good day to make that decision. We're going to listen to a song now. It's a, a song as part of a, a CD I listen to with my kids in the car. Uh, and it's a song about prayer and what it means. Uh, so it's just going to come up on the screen and hopefully it'll help us reflect on what we've just heard. Like an earthworm trying to do press ups, like a potato trying to swim, like a mountain trying to brush its teeth when we don't rely on him. When we pray, we trust our Father, that's what Jesus said. So I'll stop trusting in myself and pray to God instead. Gathered together as people of God, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that you do not change. You remain the same before the beginning of time into eternity. Your word says that you are good to all. You have compassion on all you have made. Give us, your people, a great love for your body, the church. May we, be, may we love, service, love, serve and worship together being filled with faithfulness and joy. May we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. To you be the glory both now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for all our congregation here at St Bartholomew's Church of the Saviour and all those in the Blackburn Diocese. We pray especially for our leadership team, Chris, Duncan, Jeff, Philip and John. Fill them with your Holy Spirit as they teach us your Holy Word. We pray for our Sunday school leaders and all the children in their charge that they will learn to love you more each day. We pray for the baptism of Lydia here this morning and welcome her into our church family. We pray for her parents and godparents that they will be guided and strengthened by you as they bring up Lydia in the love of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, 
Protect your worldwide church from attacks and persecution. Use your church to provide a haven of safety and a refuge for those in need. Use your church to extend your kingdom in this world. Use your church to bless the communities in which they are placed. Use your church to refresh and revive the weary and hurting. Use your church to equip your people for works of love and service. And use your church to proclaim the joyous message of the gospel. Use your church to demonstrate your faithfulness to a watching world. We pray especially for our mission partners overseas, the Bell family in Croatia, the David family in France, and the Marshall family in Southeast Asia. Bless them and protect them in all the work they do to bring your holy word to those in their care. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our God. Creator God, we thank you for our lives. We give you praise for your abundant mercy and grace we receive. We thank you for your faithfulness, even though we are not always faithful to you. Lord Jesus, we ask you to give us all peace in our mind, body, soul and spirit. We ask you to heal and remove everything that is causing stress, grief and sorrow in our lives. Please guide our path through life and make our enemies be at peace with us. Let your peace reign in our families, at our places of work, businesses and schools. Thank you that you have set us free and you are bigger than anything we face in this life. We lay our burdens before you, every single one, for we know they are much safer in your hands than our own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy and healing, we bring before you those in need of your healing touch today, including Sandra, Lorraine, Val, Catherine, George, Liz, Louise, Margaret, Hope, Jack, Claire, John, Norman, Jean, John and Barbara. And in a moment's quiet, we bring to mind those we know in our hearts that need your healing touch today. Bless and strengthen all nurses, doctors, carers and paramedics as they cope with the added pressure the coronavirus brings. We give thanks for their courage and expertise and pray for their safety and protection from the pandemic. We pray for those who have died this week. Bless all who mourn for the loss of a loved one and we ask you to be there for them in their time of sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh Lord our God, thank you that you give the gift of abundant eternal life. The Bible says that your people are like living stones being built together in your house, the church. Please help us to live and love together in a way that brings glory to your name. May the word of Christ dwell in us, teaching us in all wisdom. Whatever we do in word or deed, may we do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the prayer that teaches Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to stand in a moment and sing our final hymn. And then afterwards, at the back of the church, uh, for those eager-eyed people and uh, those builders that we've got in, that can always spot the brew, they're at the back. Uh, and uh, you're very, very welcome to uh, drift there and have a chat and uh, have a brew and a biscuit as well after the service. Let's finish off with this fantastic hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Let's stand. Yes. 
Thank you, Lord, for your presence with us this morning in our assembly. Uh, we thank you for your precious word that we've listened to. Help us, Lord, to work it out and help us to have uh, more faith and uh, more love. And uh, as we come to you in prayer, <coughs> and more expectation that you hear us and love us to this. And so bless each and every one uh, that is represented here this morning, especially we pray for this little lass, uh, that you'll just bless her life. And she may come to know you as Savior, and she may have a, a life like the Lydia of the Bible. Uh, and we pray a real blessing upon her and her family. And so, my Lord, just bless us as we separate. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just say the grace to one another, shall we? We just turn around and say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. The Lord bless you. Have a great day.